each smartphone contains between 10 and 20,000 patents, which is a huge number. When you open them up, like I have done with my old iPhone here, you can understand why. Just taking away the screen, um, we can see how thin they've got. One of the patent battles taking place right now is actually how you interact with the device through the screen. So for iPhone users, we all know that simply swiping from left to right at the bottom of the screen will open up the, the device. Apple sought to protect this interaction. But we can see here with an old Samsung handset that Samsung sought to have a similar uh, unlocking mechanism. This has brought the two companies uh, to, to battle in, in the court over this IP. Underneath the screen, uh, it gets even more complex. You can see here, this is the, uh, the amazing ability to shrink so much technology onto a tiny piece of real estate. All of these elements within this motherboard have been drawn from a lot of different companies. And this is the great power of patents, where they enable lots of people to share all of their technology and insight for the betterment of all. You have here things like the processor, the memory, the uh, uh, GPS transceiver here, and you have the GPRS communication. Now, all that you see here, every element has an element of IP within it. But the battles taking place today aren't actually about the physical element of the IP, but the digital. So the battle that's taking place between Apple and Motorola relates not to the chipset, but the software protocols, the middleware that enables this device to communicate with other devices and to sync wirelessly over the network. And then underneath that, of course, is the battery that powers the device and the screen. There are hundreds of patents relating to the physical manufacture of batteries to make them more powerful, a greater power density, but there are 10 times more patents relating to how the power output from the battery is managed with the phone. The mobile phone's been around for about 26 years now. Um, and as you can see here, we've just got some samples that we've collected over time that actually from its birth is a really serious business tool and it rapidly exploded into a consumer product. You know, what's common about most of these devices is that we used to be ruled by the standard alphanumeric keypad, the telephone keypad that we all know and use. That seemed to enable a greater degree of flexibility, more personality to uh, emerge from the devices. Today, we're driven by these things that just have huge screens. Um, if all that the mobile phone companies want to do is to uh, enable us to consume content, if these devices just become dispensers of digital content in any form, what happens to the, to, to the personality, to the brand, to the form of the device? So the same problem is with the tablets here. So this is the iPad 2 and this is the Samsung Galaxy. And indeed there have been uh, patent battles around this. Can you tell one from the other? Well, some can, some can't, and there are some arguments about the informed and the uninformed user. The point is that these devices are simply dispensers of content for us nowadays. And so we want large screens uh, and easy connectivity to any form of content that we want. And I think this will be the battleground of the future. Less how the devices look, more how they behave. Mm -hmm.